Howdy folks! How are you guys doing today? Happy Tuesday. Yeah, I think we caught it just in time there. Alrighty. So we've got our last day here talking about Java FX. Uh, I want to look at layouts today and how we can kind of work with some of those containers. Uh, give some ideas for a way you could lay out the final project. Definitely does not have to be like that, but it's an option for you. Um, some of these layouts kind of make things a little bit more adaptable for us, uh, which is nice. So gives us some nice perks there with JavaFX. Uh, remember, next week there's no stream planned. Uh, I'll just have time available to meet with you folks if you want to meet and chat about the final project, see what we can do to get you going on it if you got stuck on anything. And then on April 26th, at 6 p.m. we'll join Zoom. I'll send out a link, uh, and then you folks will present your final projects, your games, play your games, and we'll be able to score them on the spot. So we are getting close. Uh, it is near the end, so uh, just a little bit more new stuff here, and then we can go from there. Um, I also, I can talk about Project 4. I don't think we covered that one yet. Um, I didn't cover it last week. I want to get more into the Java FX stuff if you're interested. Oh, I haven't scored any of these. I'm so sorry, folks. Uh, I will definitely, definitely have these done soon. Um, we're getting there. Um, so if you did the self-assessment, great. If you haven't done a self-assessment, go ahead and add it in for me. Um, and right, make sure you, you've scored yourself according to the rubric. Even partial points, right? If you didn't get the whole thing um, complete, that's okay. Let me know. And... Um, Using your self-assessments will make the process go a little bit quicker here. All right, so let's start up a new project here. And let's make a new Java FX project. We'll kind of start from scratch here. So put this in 1500 Tuesday, all this um, I don't know, Java FX layouts. We'll try that. Okay, we don't need any of the other stuff here. We'll do it in this window. All right, so a couple things. We've got to take out the sizing on this, right? We want to get rid of that. And then we will open up our layout here, and we're going to start playing with it in Scene Builder. We right click Open in Scene Builder. <coughs> Here we go. Again, I'm going to get rid of that V box here. I don't want the V box here. I want an anchor pane to start. So everything's going to start with this anchor pane. But then what I want to do, I want to look at some of these layouts. So I like the border pane. This is kind of a fun layout I can throw inside of the anchor pane. I'm just going to um, drag it all to the corners here, kind of try and size it um, essentially to the same height as the anchor pane. Like that. So what happens with the border pane is you get sections for top, for left, for center, for right, and for bottom, which is kind of a cool way to do that. So you can now the problem with this is you can only put one thing inside of each of these, but those things that you can put in there can be other containers. So I can take a V box here and I can drop it inside the left and say, okay, I'm going to put a vertical box here on the left, and now a vertical box I can add a bunch of things to, and it will automatically put them in a vertical kind of sorted order for me here. And I'll drag a V-box over to the right, and drop it in the right, and then I'll grab a, how about a um, an H-box, and drop that on for the top, and drop that on for the bottom. And then in the center, what I want to put in here, so I don't need another container, what I just want to have here is a text area. Now text areas are great because they will automatically give you scrolling, which is super cool. So let me just go in here and grab a, a button for a second here, and let's drag that. Now to put the button in, I can drag it around the screen here, and pick which box I want to put it in, whether or not it's the horizontal box or the vertical box. Uh, let's put it in this box here. And notice the layout's kind of a little bit funny here. I think, let's see, can we make this... I think we can change that. One of these properties here. We want everything to align center um, center left. I want is it baseline center? No, nope. no. Nope. Uh, center? No. Nope. Oh goodness, that's not doing anything for me there. Um, I wanted it lower down. Well, this is okay for now. I'm not going to worry too much about it here. And then this button then will give an event handler. So we'll say on action, we'll just say button clicked here, and we'll give that a save. 
We can come back to IntelliJ, say make controller, or update controller from... Oh, it uh, doesn't know the controller. That's right, we're going to go pick the controller, because we got rid of that VBox here. Go to the controller section, pick our hello controller, give it a save. Now we can go and update controller. And then in our code, our hello controller, now, so this one is deprecated, we no longer have that one. But we do have a button clicked event, and yeah, we got to add some imports here. So let's add some imports. There we go. And so what do we want to do when the button's clicked? Oh, well, I need to give this text area a name if we want to reference it here. So we'll just call this the text area. Give that a save. And we'll go update our controller again. Now I've got a text area here, right? Just give that a little quick little import class. And we have a text area. So text area, you can say append text here. So you can keep adding text to it here. So we'll say button clicked. And uh, I think we want to add in our own new lines here. So I'll add in a new line afterwards. So say button clicked, add a new line. So to get it to run the first time, go to Hello Application, click the little run on the line numbers, and then you'll get your run in the top right. I think we're fine. Had some errors there we can ignore. And I've almost got a halo here. Oh, no, that side uh, from all the sun. So I click button. This says button click, button click, button click, button click. And notice it's now I have a scroll bar here automatically, which is super cool. I don't need to do anything special. The text area will automatically give me this scrolling feature here, which is fun. So that, that's pretty cool. And notice the bottom and top are going like all the way to the bottom across, and then the top will be all the way to the top. The left and right are kind of sandwiched between the top and bottom sections. So we want to start adding things there. <coughs> Excuse me. So if we don't want to just have one button here, because that's not really exactly what we want to do. What we can do from here, then, we can add another container. We can add a grid. And grids are really fun. I'm going to add a grid in here, and we can say, well, how many rows and how many columns do we want here? So I want to, let's go to my properties, I think it is. Does it give me my rows and columns? No. I think we can right click. There we go. And we're going to, no, I want to add another row. Column four, add column. So I want to add a column before or after, it doesn't matter right now. So I have a three by three. Then what I can do, I can take my button and I can drop it into the grid here, and we'll say maybe that'll be the top button here, and then maybe we grab another button in my controls. And now maybe we have like a left button, and then maybe we have a down button, and then maybe we have a right button. Okay, so then I can name these here if I want. This can be my up button. This can be my down button, or uh, this is the right button, right? And then what method do we want to run? Well, we can share a method if we want, right? Uh, we can do that. This will be the down button. We can share the button clicked method. And this can be the left button. So your buttons can have the same event handler or they can have distinct event handlers if you want. Totally up to you. Is this the... That's not going to center line. I think we have to do it in the grid. There's a way to get this to align the way I want. Thought. I don't remember. We can look that up after. But we'll see the grid now has all these buttons inside of it here. And then, oh, we should rename the buttons too. This will be up. This will be right. This will be down. And this will be left. So then I can go and update my controller here. Now, my controller has a bunch of buttons. Yeah, we'll add some imports for button. And now, instead of just always appending text, this action event can actually tell me something. I can say, hey, if the action event dot get source is equal to the up button, then it must have come from the up button. The up button is what triggered this action. This way you can share an event handler across multiple objects. And then we can say something like the up button clicked. Up button clicked. And then we can say, hey, else if the action event dot get source is equal to the right button, we'll say, hey, how about the right button was clicked? Uh, else if, there we go. And if it wasn't the up, it wasn't the right, let's check if it was the down. What's the down button? We'll say down button clicked. And if it wasn't the up, it wasn't the, the down. I'm sorry, if it wasn't the up, it wasn't the right, it wasn't the down. Let's check the left here. Uh, if it was the left button, we'll say left button clicked. So our same event handler then can have 
just check to see, hey, what fired this event or what triggered this event? What was the cause, the source of this event to happen here? I can say up, you know, right, down, left, up, down, right, you know, any sort of order I want to go. Uh, was it up, up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, uh, something, something, I forget what that Konami code was. But we can see we have our, our little log here, which is pretty nice for us. Then other things we can do with buttons, right, we can turn them on or off. So I can say, hey, let's do a random number here. We'll say, hey, um, so let's pick a ra uh, int for random number. And then, or let, let's do, you know, maybe this is fine for a switch. Maybe we can use a switch here. I don't usually like switches, but maybe it'll be fun. Let's switch on an int of math.random times uh, four as an integer. Why is it not like that? I need one more set of parentheses, don't I? There, so we'll switch on the integer value of math.random times four. So remember, you get between zero and not including one here, always less than one. So my different options here will be zero, one, two, or three when I turn that into an integer. Okay, and we can say the case for one is, how about we take the up button and we'll set disabled to true. We'll say, hey, on this chance, the up button gets disabled, and then we break. Again, this is why I hate switches, but sure, it's fine. Case is two, then. We'll take the right button, set disabled to true, and then we'll break. In case of three, we'll take our down button, and we'll set disabled to true, and then we'll break. And a case of four, we'll take the uh, left button, we'll set disabled to true, and then we'll break. And really, kind of before we do any of that, I want to take all of the buttons and re-enable them, just for fun here. We're just having a little bit of fun with this one. So we'll take our up button, we'll set disabled to false, and enable it here, and we'll do that to all of our buttons to make sure they're all turned back on before we start. So we'll go up and right and down and left. So we'll, set, we'll enable all of them, and then we'll randomly pick one to disable here, right? We give that a run. So one of the buttons should turn off every time we go somewhere. Again, just options here. Um, just trying to, you know, okay, so that turned off the up button. Now, okay, so it's up and right. So, oh, now down's off. And now I'm going to go right, 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 right. Oh, right's off. And then we'll go like left, 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 left. Uh-oh. Left is never getting turned off here. What's happening? Why... Why is left never getting turned off? Oh, <laughs> I need case 0, 1, 2, and 3, not 4, right? We're never going to hit 4. That's my mistake here. So let's do uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3. There we go. Let's try that. That little might work a little better for what I was trying to do here. Now left will probably turn off occasionally, right? Oh, then no, it turned off. We'll go up. Oh, it turned off. Left, up, up, turn off. Up, up, up. So eventually, right, the thing I'm clicking will eventually turn itself off and I won't be able to click it anymore. But always one of them should be turned off. Right, that sort of idea. So again, this is not how the maze is going to work for our final project. Right, we need to actually look to see if that room is blocked or not. But you can turn off buttons or enable buttons to say, hey, you can't go there because that room is blocked. Right, this idea of... Um, or if you're at the edges of the maze, right, you can't go any further north because there's no row up there or there's no column over here or you've reached the end of it, there's no, you know, valid index over that way. We won't let them travel in with the navigation buttons, so just turn those off. You can't go that direction, right? And then rooms, we get to say randomly a room could be blocked when we create the instance of room. So room might be blocked and, uh, hey, this one's been caved in or whatever you want to say for your, your little dungeon story or something like that, right? We can do silly things if we want. Now, I wanted that to be centered in this horizontal box, and I'm not figuring out how to do that. Oh, there we go, center. Yeah, so we, we aligned this in the center of the vertical box there, and then each of these then should be able to... Why are they not centering? You have to change the alignment here again. That's the text alignment. Alignment, center. Alignment, center, center, center? Mm, it's not doing exactly what I want here. That's okay. Um, I think there's a way to do it here. 
How do we get those centered? It's none of that. No padding. Bummer. I don't think it's in layout here. Um, we could just fill our, oh yeah, our vertical alignment and horizontal alignment. There we go. We do center here, vertical and center. There we go. Okay, so it is in our horizontal alignment. We'll center these. We'll center vertically too for fun for each of those buttons. I just like when things kind of line up. They don't matter much, but it's just kind of fun to make all those look a little bit nicer here. So center and center. There we go. Okay, so now we have some nice centered buttons here. All right, we can put some labels in over on this other side here if we wanted, right, for different things. Um, right, for our, our player stats, and maybe we'll have a, a sign over here for the, the... We could add a label here for player stats. This is just one option here. This is definitely not the only way you can do this game here. Um, and then we'll have some NPC stats. NPC stats. Sure, like if an NPC, NPC shows up, we do that. And then what do we want to put in the vertical box? We we'll put anything in here. Um, we could have the amount of gold in there if we wanted, or we could, I don't know, have some description of what happens. Uh, I guess the description probably goes in the text here. Um, let's see what else do we need here. Oh yeah, so we need some other action buttons, right? So these are just the nav buttons here. Maybe we do the action buttons up at the top. I don't know, or put uh, those ones in the top pane and other buttons at the bottom. I don't know, we could throw some buttons in here. Why not? Let's let's put a couple in here. So we'll do some buttons in here. Button. No, button. 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 Not the prettiest, but that'll be okay. Let's see if we can center those there then. There we go. We'll center some buttons. And you can give those some different options if you want. Right, have them do different things. Right, so maybe that one is like attack. And this one might be run. And then this one might be, um, was it search and sleep or something? You can cover all sorts of options here. But the fun thing here, when we do that, let me update my controller, make sure we're up to date, is because we're using the border layout and we're using those sort of align to the center or whatever we want to do here, as I, oh, it's not doing it for me. Never mind. Oh, because we're stuck in the anchor pane. That's right. We put ourselves in an anchor pane. Can we get rid of that anchor pane? We just be border pane. We might be able to do that. I think we can just do a border pane. So that might be a little trickier because I don't want to cut out the border pane. Paste it in. Nope. I want to cut it out, delete that one, and paste it in. There we go. So we just have a border pane. Now we uh, update our controller. Oops, I mean, that's right, we got to tell the border pane what its controller is. Say, hey, your controller is the hello controller. That save. Can we update now? Let's see if this will run. So the, the anchor pane is nice because it's fixed, right? It's an anchor. With the border layout now, though, there we go. Now we get the auto resizing. This is what I wanted here. So if we're just using the border layout, right, it's going to try and size itself the best it can. I mean, eventually we're going to run out of space and we lose stuff here. But because we're trying to like center things, they will stay pretty much centered. Let's see if we can't get that scroll bar in there. Now we got our scroll bar there, right? We can kind of shrink that down. And it even get a scroll left and right if you want, which is kind of awful, but sure. Do that sort of thing. So we got lots of room for how we want this to kind of adapt here. So anchor pane is a great start because you just drag and drop and it stays there. But these sort of adaptive layouts are really nice for, hey, let's just go and figure out what we want to do here. It's going to size ourself, and it makes it be resizable. Um, you also notice I can type into this text pane here, so you can set that to editable as false. We'll do a uh, public void initialize. Initialize, I think it was. Initialize, I spelled that wrong. Initialize, initialize. There we go. We'll take our text area, and we're going to say set editable to false. So we can say, hey, you're not allowed to type in here, which is a fun property. So that way the user can't type in that text area. Uh, did I do it wrong? No, nope. I think I spelled initialize wrong. Did I spell it wrong? Oh, yep. Uh, rename to 
initial eyes. Okay, init eel eyes. There we go. Let's try that. Can you hear that uh, crane or whatever out my window? Notice I can't type in here now. We've got sandhill cranes occasionally. I thought they all moved off with the construction, but I think he's angry with all the construction. He used to love hanging out in the swamp back there. And again, these buttons don't do anything yet. We never added handlers, but we could do that sort of thing. Right, does this sort of give you some ideas for what we can do with some layouts and how we can turn buttons on and off, uh, that sort of thing? Right, and again, in the initialize, we can set up, hey, we can set up a player instance of the player class. We can set up a maze, the instance of the maze class, and we can reference them as private attributes in the controller here so we can interact with them everywhere else in our code. Right, like we did with our coffee shop. You want to have that class level attribute of the coffee that you can go then and edit and use everywhere. We'll do that same idea. So as we have our player class and our maze class and our NPC, right? And then uh, it's possible some things are null, right? You can have an attribute that's null. So if I were to make a class, um, we have coffee, right? Sure. And we just had a private string for size or something like that. And then we'll add. Um, generate some getters and setters, sure, why not? And then generate a constructor. Constructor, sure. Okay, so now I can make the coffee. So what you can have in here, in your controller, you can have a private coffee, coffee, and then coffee can start off as null. And then when something happens, you can say, hey, if coffee is not null, I'm sorry, not null, then we can say, you know, uh, let's take our NPC. Oh, we don't even have that label. We'll take our text area dot append coffee dot get size, right? But if it is null, then nothing happens. So we only want to do something if it's not null here. So checking if there is a value or not. So like as you fight your NPC, you can just get rid of it and say, hey, NPC is null if you want. That sort of uh, attribute here, and. So if you wanted, right, rooms could have, uh, where's our room class here? Stores its location when it's blocked and the NPC for that room. So the room itself would have the associated random NPC, right? So you could say, hey, give me the current room, right? Or you'd have to ask the maze or say, hey, maze, get the, give me the room at this location or some sort of way of kind of traversing that relationship, right? If maze has a room and room has an NPC, you have to say, okay, maze, give me the give me the room, hey, room, give me the NPC, and then check to see if that's null or not. And sort of uh, working its way through that. So we could say, hey, maybe coffee is not null. Maybe we'll say, let's set coffee here. Um, coffee equals a new coffee. But maybe the size we give it is null here. So then coffee won't be null, but we could say coffee.get size does not equal null here. So if size is null, right, this does not have a value, it might be crashing here. So we want to make sure we don't do that. Right, and maybe we should get some random sized coffees in here. Um, let's, uh, okay, let's, let's add some random sized coffees in here. So we'll say, hey, on a zero, then we'll make a coffee here. On a, a one, we'll have a small coffee. On a two, we'll have a medium coffee medium, and on three we'll have a large. It'll give you some random size coffee. So if it's not null, well, we can say, hey, we found a coffee, or a what? Coffee size coffee, right? Uh, I need to append in here. There we go. So if it's not null, then we found a coffee. If it is null, right, if we get this one case where it was null here, then that's fine. We're just not going to do anything. Give that a look. Okay, so as we occasionally up, down, and we found a large coffee. Found a large coffee. Oh, I forgot my new lines here. Medium coffee. Small coffee. Right, so eventually we get coffees. Oh, now there was no coffee here. Right, you can even say, hey, if it is null, else, you know, um, sorry, new line. Um, you could say, hey, you did not find any coffee or something like that. So we got lots of choices, uh, lots of different ways of going about it here. Um, the border layout is not your only layout you can use, there are other fun ones. Um, flow panes are good. They will just kind of automatically flow as you start adding things. Uh, they're pretty handy for that. Um, 
Yeah, I think the other ones are probably a little trickier than we want to do, actually adding in like titles and tabs and that sort of thing here. I think we're, we're probably better off with just uh, something a little simpler. You can just do a basic grid and add everything to a grid. Say, hey, this is a 10 by 10 grid, and let's put a bunch of things in. All right, we got we got lots of different ways of going about displaying this. If you want to use the anchor pane, you can use the anchor pane, right? Uh, that's perfectly fine too. So I just want to show you some different options and different uh, things that we could try here with our layouts. All right, so enabling and disabling buttons is good. We're checking whether or not there is something here with that null check or not. And then I think, uh, other than that, we're pretty good. Um, right? If you have a maze class, if you wanted, or you could just have it be an array list of rooms here. Um, right, And then you could just get the different values out. That's probably easier than having a maze class, right? So you'll, you'll need to know what your current location is, right? what row and what column you're currently in. And as you go up and down and left and right, those need to change, right? Row goes minus one to go up, plus one to go down. The column goes plus one to go right. It goes minus one to go left. I think I'm backwards. I don't know lefts and rights here uh, when I'm on the camera here. And then the different operations, right? You can turn off the buttons too. You can even like say, hey, only if there's an NPC can we use fight and run. Sure, that's fine. And maybe only when there's not an NPC can we use search and sleep, right? So after... Um, Searching, otherwise we're going to get attacked. If you want to let them click search and then they just the monster gets a free attack, that's perfectly fine too. You can punish your players, and that's a good way to make sure you can actually die eventually. Um, it's really hard to die otherwise with this this uh, being able to sleep anytime you want here because you never really find crazy hard monsters. But you know, it's all kind of random, uh, it's, and you're welcome to tweak any of that randomness if you don't like exactly how the stats are generated. That's perfectly fine, right? You, you're you know you're welcome to kind of tweak this a little bit to make it as, as interesting as you want to make it. Okay? Any other thoughts, concerns, questions? Uh, that's all I really have to talk about today. I wanted to give you some ideas, show you some layouts, show you ways of interacting with some of these other options here. Um, and that's about it. For the rest of the night, we've got to work on the final project. Happy to hop on screen sharing sessions, Zoom or Discord with you folks. Um, just shoot me a message and I'll, I'll keep a list of who's going at a time. I'll try and limit it to maybe like 10 to 15 minutes per person to, to make sure I can get through enough people um, as, I, as I go around. Because um, again, trying to simulate, I could walk around a, a classroom where you're all sitting there with a computer in front of you. So we'll do our best to make that kind of happen. And uh, if you want to meet other times, I got my regular office hours Wednesday afternoon. I'm happy to meet with you then. If those times don't work with you, let me know. Uh, we can try and meet up another time. And we also have study group uh, with Mr. Tim tomorrow from 12 to 1. Uh, you, you're definitely encouraged to go to that, ask questions. Um, you're welcome to chat about the final project, talk about ideas. Uh, what I would not like you to do is like just share your code and say, hey, this is what I have so far, you know, and have everyone be seeing it, that sort of thing. But like specific questions like, hey, how do I turn a button on or off here? How might I go design a class here? You know, talking about design ideas is perfectly fine. Right? I think the point at which you're taking notes and saying, oh, okay, I need to have, a, you know, I'm going to have a method named this and a method named this, you know, I think we've gone a little too far with that copying. Uh, we're just chatting about ideas, perfectly fine. Okay? So if we've done this right here, the game itself, right, the way that player interacts with things and the way that rooms interact and the way that NPCs interact, none of it actually needs to care that it is a JavaFX application. Right? All of the, the game logic should be in the, the game classes there, where like, hey, player can attack something. Great. So we can say, hey, player.attack and give it an NPC to attack, or NPC.attack and have it accept a player to attack. Though you can be changing each other's hit points. That way, none of that logic has to happen in the controller. So if I wanted to lift and shift the game, I could turn it into a web application by just changing the front end of it. The game itself would be the same. I could just give you a website. And I would say, okay, give me all the details out of my classes here, and I can show them all on the screen, and then you can interact with the game that way. Or I could turn it into a mobile application and give you buttons on a mobile screen, uh, which this scene builder stuff is actually pretty similar to building Android applications, which is pretty cool. So it gets you ready if, uh, if you're interested in that sort of mobile development as well. Uh, or turn it into a console-based application. If people like, you know, I want to punch, punch, a of punch a bunch of buttons, we could do that. You know, we could even add in some details to rooms and have some interesting descriptions. Like, hey, this room is a, you know, musty and has some cobwebs over in the corner and give them some more narrative stuff. We could add in that sort of thing as well. But I'm um, just trying to hit some of the basics here. Okay, any other thoughts, questions, or concerns? I think you folks have been kind of quiet tonight, but that's that's okay. Uh, no problem with that. Just let me know what I can do to help. I want to make sure you are successful at this. Uh, 
I am super happy when everyone gets 100% on the final project. Like, that is the best end of class. Um, and, and I'm more than happy to give out all 100% if you're able to check all the boxes off here. All right, take a look at the rubric. All right, you've got your maze, which is this 2D array list. You've got the room class, you've got a player class, you've got the NPC class. They interact with each other. You can search a room, you can sleep in a room, you can run away from an NPC, and you can fight between the player and the NPC. So as we go, you'll demo that. I might ask you a couple questions about your code, ask you what you thought about writing it, and then check, 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 check. Um, that one gets graded and marked off. And then we're in pretty good shape. Again, you're welcome to work in pairs if you want. Just let me know um, who you're paired up with, and I can give both of you access to the same repository. You'll want to go through, uh, before you start changing anything, make sure you go and click this little fetch button to make sure you have the latest and greatest version. Because if your partner's made changes and you made changes, get can get a little confused, no pun intended there. So you got to be a little bit careful with it here. So before you start, just make sure you click this little fetch button here. So here's JavaFX layouts. Um, and if you like this layout, you're welcome to essentially copy off of it for what you want to do for your final project. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I, I, you know, always you might want to cite your source if you're just actually copy pasting here. But if you just was inspired by, perfectly fine. Um, just leave me a note like inspired by. Uh, that, that's okay. Um, no big deal there. Okay. All right, folks, that was actually it. I um, don't think we've got anything else to talk about then. So that is the last of the content for the course. we got the rest of tonight um, up through 9.45 p.m. or so is a regular class time to get working on this. And then we have all of next week. Again, I'm not planning on streaming at all. Just shoot me messages. I'll put you all in a, a list for who I'm going to work with. You know, in 10, 15 minutes each person uh, or each group, try and get through, help everybody um, who's got questions. And then in two weeks from tonight, we'll jump on a Zoom call and you folks will present your final projects. And usually it's a lot of fun because everyone does it a little bit differently. Um, they might add some different flavors and call, you know, give NBCs funny names and, and that sort of thing. So that, that's part of the fun stuff. Like once you've gotten some of these requirements down, you could add in some of that more interesting stuff. So if there's like one through six different monsters, you can give them different names if you want and, and all sorts of fun stuff can happen. Um, Again, once you've got the basics down, uh, you can kind of iterate on it and add some add some fun stuff to it. So, all right, uh, let me see. I don't know if anyone else is around here. I'll put on my ending screen, and we'll see if anyone's around on Twitch land. It might be go fun to to raid. It's a little early still, but that's okay. Um, see if we're gonna go hang out anywhere. Let's see. We've got. Um, oh, a lot of people are on, but. Let's see. I'm looking for someone doing software. Um, no other software people around that I can see right now. So we've got chess, uh, paleontologizing, if you want to learn about dinosaurs, that's always fun. Or woodcraft. Um, Owen's making some pens, it's kind of fun. Maybe we'll head over to uh, paleontologizing. See if I can spell that right here. All right, folks, we'll head over that way. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll say hi, take care, and again, let me know what I can do to help. Uh, happy to make sure that you are successful, and that's the goal. All right, take care, everybody. Your own uniform. Be a cover model. A